The Bible is a book filled with mysteries and curiosities that trace back to the ancient divine creation of God. Narrated in its early chapters, including the formation of the first man and woman on earth. Additionally, this sacred book explores the events related to the first children of Adam and Eve, with the firstborn named Cain and the second Abel. Later, after the tragedy involving Cain and Abel, a third son named Seth was born. Hello, dear viewers. Welcome back to Bible Stories, the channel where we unravel the mysteries and delve into the captivating narratives of the scriptures. Today, we embark on a thought-provoking journey to explore a question that has intrigued minds for generations. Where and who are the descendants of Cain today? This enigma takes us deep into the ancient passages of the Bible, revealing stories that connect us to our shared human history. Before we dive in, if you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to our channel, hit the like button and ring the notification bell so you never miss out on the fascinating revelations and insights we uncover together. And don't forget to share this content with your brothers, sisters and family members who are eager to deepen their understanding of biblical genealogies. Adam met his wife Eve, who conceived and gave birth to a son they called Cain the couple's firstborn. Later Eve said, I have received a son from the Lord, and they named the second son Abel. Abel dedicated himself to sheep farming, while Cain became involved in agriculture. The story of the birth of Adam and Eve's first children is widely known. However, the book of Hebrews in chapter 11, an ancient Semitic Jewish tradition, brings forth a fascinating curiosity about Abel and Cain. According to Hebrews 11, starting from verse 4, we find the following account. By faith, Abel offered God a better sacrifice than Cain, showing his righteousness, and God approved of his offerings. Even after his death long ago, Abel continues to speak through his example. In ancient Jewish tradition, there are accounts that indicate Abel presented a purer and more sincere sacrifice to God, offering the best he had available, which were his cattle. Since Abel was a shepherd of sheep, he chose the best animal from his flock and offered it as a sacrifice to God. In contrast, Cain, being a tiller of the ground, chose to offer the fruits of his crops, which were of lower quality to God. God, on the other hand, was more pleased with Abel's sincere heart, who gave his best, choosing the best animal from his flock as a sacrifice. This demonstrated the difference in attitude and intention behind both brothers' offerings, and God favored the more sincere and generous offering of Abel. Scriptures and ancient Jewish traditions suggest that out of frustration and anger at God not approving his sacrifice, Cain ultimately committed the shocking and mysterious act of killing his own brother. This story is widely known and fascinating, and subsequent verses and later chapters of the Bible reveal additional details about Cain's life. Furthermore, it is important to clarify that, according to the interpretation of some sources, the land of Nod was not the name of a person, but rather the name of the land where Cain went after his encounter with God. The land of Nod is mentioned in Genesis 4, 16 to 17, describing Cain after he had killed his brother Abel. God punished Cain for his crime, causing him to wander the land. Verse 16 says, So Cain went out from the Lord's presence and lived in the land of Nod, east of Eden. This land is often associated with Cain and his descendants. In addition to its literal meaning in the biblical narrative, the land of Nod is also seen by some as a symbol of exile or separation from God. Cain was cast out from God's presence and condemned to wander in the land of Nod as part of his punishment for Abel's murder. Nod in Hebrew means wandering or land of wandering and it is not seen as a person's name. Ancient Jewish tradition and other ancient texts indicate that Cain's wife was called Avon. According to some interpretations and traditions, Ian was one of Cain and Abel's sisters and also became Cain's wife. 
Something curious and often less discussed about the story of Cain and Abel is that in terms of age, they were not as young as their appearance might suggest. Some rabbis and experts claim that Cain was about 70 years old when he killed his brother, and Abel was probably around 60 years old at the time of the incident. After Cain was banished to the land of Nod, he and Ann, his wife and sister, had a son named Enoch. It's important to note that this Enoch should not be confused with the Enoch from Seth's lineage, who is a different figure in the Bible. The Bible informs us that Cain founded a city in the region where he was, in the land of wandering, and there he had more sons and daughters with Aan, giving rise to Cain's lineage. Cain's lineage flourished in that city and expanded to other regions. Although many often viewed the descendants of Cain unfavorably, among the descendants of Cain, there were those who played an important role in creating various musical instruments, including flutes and lyres, among other skills. Additionally, in Cain's lineage, we find people dedicated to livestock farming in a nomadic life, seeking peace. According to Genesis in chapter 4, from verse 17 onwards, it is mentioned that Cain and his wife had a son named Enoch. Later, Cain built a city and named it after his son, calling it Enoch. Enoch was the father of Yirad, who, in turn, was the father of Mugil, who begot Musil, who finally fathered Lamech. Lamech is notable for being one of the first characters in the Bible to practice polygamy. He married two women, Ah and Zillah, and composed a poem for them recorded in the Bible in which he speaks of committing homicide in self-defense and his revenge against those who harmed him. Lamech and Aa had a son named Jabal, considered the ancestor of those who were dedicated to livestock farming and living in tents. Jabal had a brother named Jubil, the forefather of all skilled musicians on the lion flute. Cain's lineage, as we can see, included a diversity of artistic talents, musicians and farmers, as well as people involved in livestock farming, leading a nomadic life in tents. Furthermore, in Genesis 4.22, it is mentioned that Zillah had a son named Tubal-Cain, a skilled metal worker who worked with bronze and iron. Tubal-Cain had a sister, Nama. In modern times, there are various theories and interpretations about the descendants of Cain that are completely unfounded and prejudiced. However, I would like to present some of these interpretations, even though I do not support them, as unfortunately, there have been cases of people adhering to these interpretations in our comments. Therefore, we consider it important to elucidate these views. One of the interpretations frequently mentioned suggests that Cain's descendants and the mark of Cain would be associated with the African people, that is, black people. This interpretation makes no sense, as mentioned earlier. It has no basis in the Bible and is just another ridiculous justification for prejudice and racism. Another misguided interpretation that is sometimes proposed is the idea that the Roma people, gypsies, would be descendants of Cain due to the itinerant lifestyle of the Roma, which resembles the wandering condition attributed to Cain in the biblical narrative. However, this is another interpretation that makes no sense. The third interpretation, which is also considered absurd and prejudiced, claims that Asians such as Chinese, Japanese and Koreans would be descendants of Cain due to the belief that Cain's distinctive feature would be slanted eyes. Now, returning to the first interpretation that refers to the color of Cain's skin, it lacks any sense, because in both Cain's and Seth's lineages, there were individuals with dark skin. Furthermore, it's important to highlight that the notion of the mark of Cain mentioned in the Bible does not make any reference to skin color especially not black skin. In fact, the terms used in the Bible to refer to people with black skin are Ham and Cush. The second interpretation also lacks a basis by suggesting that the Roma people, gypsies, are descendants of Cain, as the Roma are not the only nomadic people, both in modern times and in antiquity. 
we can observe various nomadic groups, including Semitic peoples themselves, who constantly moved from one region to another. These peoples spread all over the world, such as the Assyrians, Lebanese, Arabs, and Jews in Europe and various other regions of the world. Therefore, this interpretation does not have solid grounding. Similarly, the last interpretation suggesting that Asians are descendants of Cain also lacks a basis, as the term Mark of Cain in the Bible does not make any reference to eyes, let alone slanted eyes. In reality, according to the biblical narrative, Adam was formed from the dust of the earth, that is, from clay, which means that he could have given rise to different ethnicities and peoples like those we see in the world today. Therefore, the various ethnicities that exist today were already present in the world before the flood in both Cain's and Seth's lineages, including people of different ethnic backgrounds such as white, black, Asian, with indigenous characteristics, Semitic, and so on. But the intriguing question that remains is where are the descendants of Cain mentioned in the book of Genesis 6.1 in today's world? This verse provides some intriguing information on this matter. And it came to pass, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them. Or, although it's a short verse, it emphasizes the expansion of humanity, using the original Hebrew word, Adam, which also appears in Aramaic, meaning humanity. Therefore, all lineages, both the descendants of Cain and the descendants of Seth, began to intermingle at this point, multiplying among themselves. Furthermore, it's possible that in Noah's lineage, there were connections to Cain's lineage. Some theories suggest that Noah's mother, Noah's wife, or even the wives of Noah's sons could have had roots in Cain's lineage. What's interesting is that the text in Genesis 6-1 emphasizes that humanity, the descendants of Adam from both genealogies and lineages, began to multiply. This means they started to intermingle, that is, have relations with each other. It was then that many daughters were born, representing the descendants of Cain that persist to this day, flowing in the veins of all people. We are all descendants of both Seth and Cain because these lineages intermingled. In response to the initial question of this video, we can affirm that the descendants of Cain are scattered all over the earth, just as we are descendants of Seth, Cain, Adam and Eve. This happened after the flood of Noah and his three sons. But tell us, what did you know about the descendants of Cain in today's world? Were you aware of some of the absurd theories about Cain's descendants? Thank you very much to all who watched the video up to this point. God bless you and see you in the next chapter of Bible Stories.